Easter Sunday is going to be a lot different this year for a lot of folks. But we're going to be talking live to Pastor Miles from the Rock Church about how we can all still celebrate. got to do what you should, and for many, that means still going to church. You know, more people attend church on Easter than any other Sunday. But this year, yes, it's going to look a little different. But here's the thing. Social distancing doesn't have to mean emotional distancing or spiritual distancing. Pastor Miles McPherson from The Rock Church joining us now to share how we can bring the community together this Sunday. Pastor Miles, thanks so much for joining us. Can you hear me? My pleasure. How are you doing today? Great, great. Tell us about the Rock Church Easter weekend services starting today with Good Friday. How can people connect here? Well, they go to sdrock.com. We're today, 5 and 7, and then 6 services on Sunday. Um, and I would encourage people to step back and, and look at this more than a religious holiday as acknowledging the death of Christ for our sins. He didn't come to die just so we can wear crosses around our neck. He came actually to pay the price for us, and then he rose from the dead uh, to, on Sunday to prove his power and victory over death, and that we realize that those are real historical events that happen for a very specific reason. You know, Pastor, I have a little sign in my kitchen I see every morning before work. It says, count your blessings. You know, it just seems so important to focus on what we're blessed with during these tough times. I mean, what's, what's your message going to be? Well, it'll be exactly that in, in different words, but I'm blessed that he died and paid for my sin that I could be forgiven. I mean, I was I was a mess uh, 36 years ago doing cocaine every day and smoking weed, and my the relationship with my girlfriend at the time was destroyed, and I asked Christ to be my Savior April 12th. It'll be actually 36 years wow. this Sunday, and I stopped doing cocaine in one day. My girlfriend and I got back together. We got married that year, and she's still my wife, so I'm, I'm blessed to have good, good be given another chance, not a second chance. It was probably chance number two million, uh, but it was another chance to get it right, and I'm trying to get it right every day. Yeah, we love your backstory. Um, just amazing, uh, you know. But with all this uncertainty, a lot of struggle lately with a lot of people listening to this right now. You know, what words of encouragement can you and the congregation offer our, our viewers? Well, I think practically uh, COVID-related, we're doing a lot of volunteer work to fixing masks and right. collecting PPEs for the people in the hospital. But I think on a spiritual level, one of the things we need to realize as because of COVID is that all the things that we trust in our money, our job, uh, food security is, is pre pretty much gone. And that we really need to think about what, is, what do I put my security in? And who am I praying to? And is who I'm praying to alive and able to help me and get me through? So I would hope that people would step back and instead of saying, God, you're doing this, that we say, God, what do you want me to learn through this? He's not the one doing it. Stuff happens, but it's how we respond that's important. And so I pray that people would step back and realize I can't trust in the things of the world and the, my 401k. I got to trust in God because in the end, he's the one that's going to be left standing. He's the end. He's the one that we're praying to. What should people be asking for in their prayers? I mean, break it down for us, whether it's those who lost their jobs or those praying for people going through these tough times. I mean, just walk us through what, what can we be asking for in our prayers? Very good. First, first admit to God, and it depends on where you're at. God, I'm a sinner, I'm not perfect, and maybe I haven't trusted you enough. To acknowledge that you were created to have a relationship with God, not just go to church and not just do a couple of good things and then God's supposed to bless me. It's a relationship just like a parent with a child. Yeah. And so to tell God, God, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to start over, forgive me of my sin mm -hmm. and fill me with the spirit of God. And I want to have a relationship with you and I want to walk faithfully out of obedience. And so it's, it, the big key word is relationship, it's not religion. So if people would just cry out to God and say, God, can I, can I start a relationship with you and ask Jesus to forgive me and, and fill me with his, the spirit of God. That's what the relationship, how the relationship happens. Pastor, and, is, and then allow God to walk them through this crisis. That is the message so many need to hear right now. We, we sure appreciate your time. Pastor Miles McPherson, we appreciate your time here this morning. Prayers to you. God bless you.